Welcome back troglodytes to Would You Rock or Not. Today we're going to look at something that is being described as a Gibson Les Paul standard from 1979 that's a pre-prehistoric. Okay, before we make sense out of any of that and issue some corrections to that title, let's just take a look at this fantastic example from the late 70s. Something you're going to notice is it has a two-piece top. If you're not familiar with 70s Gibson history, this is mind blowing because this is the era where you will find anywhere between like three to five piece tops. I've even seen some crazy seven piece tops on rare occasion. However, it's not impossible to find, but the best way to rule out if it was just some crazy retop job and a refinish will lie on the back of the headstock. Generally, when you do find one of these mythical unicorns, it will look something like this. Notice the vertically stamped Made in USA and the last three digits being 499 or less. What does that mean? It means it was made in the original Kalamazoo factory and they were known sometimes for just kicking out exceptional examples, built to resemble a little bit more of their 50s heritage. There are lots of Gibson collectors who will only buy Kalamazoo made guitars. So once you know this is a Kalamazoo beauty, none of the rest of this really surprises you, but you can definitely see it is such a beautiful example. Some people might claim the finish is a little bit clown bursty, but this is just kind of what I expect from this era. The back and the neck also feature this burst. So now back to this title and a few gripes I have with it. Prehistorics, those are my thing. That's what I feel I've specialized in. They're the things that get me the most fired up about old guitars. So this guy throwing around the prehistoric tag makes me a little bit upset. I've talked about this topic many times, but the two big factors for determining if your guitar is actually able to be described as a prehistoric lies in the bridge and in the serial number. If we take a look here, you're going to see it has a Nashville styled bridge. That's what you should see in this era. But all prehistorics will have an ABR1 bridge. That's what makes them special. This one does not, so it cannot be advertised as a prehistoric. Another thing all prehistorics will have in common is an inked stamped serial number. But this one, it's a stamp serial number. It's just regular. This is not trying to be a reissue of any type. It even still has the three piece maple neck, which further disqualifies it. So while the seller might be a little bit confused as to what this guitar is, he is very right. This is a magnificent example that should bring in a premium at the market. However, he's asking $20,000, which is a little bit much since this is not necessarily a limited run of any sort. It might have been a custom order, but it could also just be something that Kalamazoo kicked out as we talked about earlier. They are out there, but they are hard to find because they're usually locked up in collections because two-piece center seem highly desirable. Some other limited edition models made at this time with two-piece tops include my Super Standard, the Les Paul, super custom, but the one I really want to focus in on here is the Les Paul KM. What is interesting about these guitars is they are the only stock Gibson guitar to come with uncovered white T-top bobbin pickups. This is the model that got DiMarzio all in a kerfuffle and did that whole patent thing. You will find other Gibson guitars with double cream like Tim Shaw's or Dirty Fingers, but this is the only T-top model. But the other thing is they have a stock two-piece top, and again, these are from 1979. Now notice the large headstock. The inlays are abnormally white. The custom-made plaque was only done on like the very first run, but you've got the cherry bursted back, as well as the neck, you have a stamp serial number and vertical made in USA stamp with Grover tuners. But let's look back here. The guitar that this guy is selling, again, it's from 1979, but doesn't this look very similar to a Les Paul KM? The only thing that's really different is the top has abnormally nice flame. It has the same wide styled headstock. The tuners are a little bit different, but those would cover over the original Grover print. 
and maybe the pickups just got covers on them. Now that I've got your conspiracy tinglers going, no. It, it was not a KM. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just letting you know if you want a guitar very similar to this, you might be able to find a KM with this kind of top. How do I know it's not a KM? It goes down to those inlays. So yes, this is a very nice example of a Les Paul standard from Kalamazoo. I could see a top end collector paying about five to 6,000 for this particular example. So for our playing demo today, I guess a Les Paul KM would be the closest to this guitar. <laughs> Question left, would you rock this Les Paul standard from 1979 with rare two-piece center seam highly flame top or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.